Good evening. Uh, it's 7 o'clock. We'll get started. Uh, first thing we'd like to do is have everyone uh, stand and face the flag. We're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> the next thing I'd like to do is to have a moment of silence for the lives that have been lost in the uh, Israel-Hamas war. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the Bloomfield Township Zoning Board of Appeals meeting of October the 10th, 2023. As a brief introduction, the Zoning Board of Appeals is a seven-member quasi-judicial body appointed by the Bloomfield Township Board of Trustees per the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act. Matters pending before the Zoning Board of Appeals are decided on a case-by-case -case basis. Any appeal of a decision made by the Zoning Board of Appeals is subject to circuit court review. Each case will be called separately in the order shown on tonight's agenda. There will be an opportunity for public comment at one point during each case. All persons wishing to comment will be asked to provide their name and address at the podium, address your comments to the board, and not the applicant or other members of the public. Given the number of appeals tonight, please make your comments brief. Comments by the Neighborhood Association will be considered as part of the factual information presented to the board, but those comments are not the determining factor for approval or denial. Please confine comments to the specific request before the board. For a request to be successful tonight, an affirmative vote of at least four members present is required. We hope this provides a better understanding of what you can expect at tonight's meeting. So I'd like to take attendance. So noted. Okay, and then I'll need a uh, motion or comment on the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals minutes of September 12th, 2023. So I'll moved. To approve the minutes. So I have a motion uh, and a support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, the motion passes. So let's call the first item, item 1P1906 Long Lake Shores Drive. Is the applicant ready? So if the applicant could come to the uh, podium and uh, give your name and address and summarize the request. Thank you. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Can you hear me all right? This is Lou DeRosier. Let's see, how do I lift this thing? Okay. I'm Lou DeRosier, architect, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Um, we're here for the uh, Reuben, is it on? Oh. Can I, wait, can I just interrupt Testing. one second? Sure. I neglected to say this. If you're here, item two has been postponed to next week. That's 734 Yarmouth. Item 16 has been postponed to next week. I can just talk That's 4989 Stonely. And item 17 has been postponed, excuse me, to next month. And that's 4600 Charing Cross. So if you're here for any of those items, item two, item 16, or item 17, we will not be taking those up tonight. Okay, sorry for the That's interruption. That's terrific, thank you. Now we have sound too. Yeah. Um, anyhow, I'm Lou DeRosier, architect for this project in uh, Bloomfield Hills. This is on uh, Long Lake. And uh, we have done, drawn this very attractive, beautiful home and we've gone in for a building permit. And I, I said I was never gonna appear here for, for this project before because we were here, well, probably a year ago. And, I, and you said, now don't be coming back. But I have to say, uh, we there was a misinterpretation with, with the ordinance with your planners, and they would probably say the same, that um, that we thought we, we were building right on the edge of the, uh, you can see the red line is the uh, natural feature setback, and we were told we could do that, and then they said, well, it's, uh, it's a little more sophisticated than that. So I'll just give you the short <laughs> version that uh, uh, we, uh, as you can see, the house is not anywhere on that line at all, but of course, when you build construction, you're gonna have some disturbance of the soil on the side. So we're here to ask permission that we can do that. But then we'll, as soon as that wall is up, we're gonna return that to its natural state. And the good news is the existing house that has now been demolished, 
uh, that driveway went into that green area and it was it had already had asphalt over and everything so the new project there'll be more natural setback and uh, so I'm here with the Mr. Rosier, or I'm De Rosier, De Rocher, <laughs> choosing myself, it's the builder, and he'll Some explain the other situation. Title. Thank you. Hi, I'm James De Rocher, Custom Homes by De Rocher Inc. Um, as Lou was saying, we're asking for two variances. One is temporary disturbance um, for construction activities, and that's restored. And then uh, one is permanent for the driveway approach, as you can see where it meets the road. Um, we're in there at the furthest point, three, 13 feet, and then that tapers down to zero feet. So those are the two variants we're requesting. Is that, was that uh, an existing driveway or is that, was that uh, different from what was there before? So the old driveway went actually, it was 13 feet into the natural features setback, but it came 100 feet into the property at that 13 feet. We're now eliminating all that, and it'll still be 13 feet at the road, which is existing to this date, and by 20 feet, we'll be out of the natural feature setback. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? I so, just, well, I, I have a question for the staff. If I wasn't at the meeting back in February, do I vote on this? No, you don't. Okay. No. So who can vote? I thought we said because these were this oh, I'm, actually, I, I misspoke. This is a different this one. This is a new appeal. Oh, this is a new appeal. Yes. These are two items Even that we didn't see a before. There's history, and yes. there's a recent action within the last year. It's but this is a new list. appeal and new notice. So, yes, we all can participate. Everybody can vote. Okay. Thank you for that clarification, Thank Chair. You. And if you can just clarify for me, the, the temporary is what's running alongside the house. The only thing that's permanent is that very corner. Is that it? By Correct. The, the green portion of the driveway. At the front. At the front. It, yeah, so... The yellow to the... Yeah, can you point yeah, the can pointer point for me right here? So, so the reason this exists, I, I'm familiar with this because I um, spent summers uh, house near here, is you, you've got uh, the lake and there's a canal here. So yeah. there's, it water borders right. it on two sides. So I'm just, I just want to be clear on what's the temporary versus the permanent. Yeah, so all of this is temporary. Can you use oh, them behind me? Yeah, there you go. That's what I thought. The only permanent is down. Is in the driveway. The very, okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. I want to be clear on that. Okay. Any other questions? Open this up to the public. Anyone like to comment on this item? Close the public hearing and bring it. No, oh, I'm sorry. Good evening. My name is Samuel Gunn. And uh, I'm an attorney, and I'm here on behalf of Jeff Cohn. He's out of town, and he wanted me to uh, voice his objection to the uh, requested variance because he thinks it'll have um, a negative impact on the ingress and egress uh, to the boat, uh, the boat ramp, and um, I. Also understood that this property was already granted earlier this year a 25 foot uh, variance, and um, I think the objection was that the the home seems to be too large for the lot to to fit in with to stay within the boundaries of the natural setbacks as required by the township code. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to comment on this item? Close the public hearing and then uh, ask the applicant to respond to the comments. Any response? Uh, yeah, go, go I'll ahead. be quicker than you. Uh, you, come, <laughs> you can do it after. Uh, no, I just wanted to say that, you know, because of the canals there, and, and you did mention this, Mr. Chairman, that uh, we're already 25 feet back, and if it was a side yard and there was no canal, it'd be 16 feet. So, it, uh, how, you know, we've lost nine feet there, but that's okay. Yeah, I also don't understand where it obstructs the boat ramp. I'm not aware where the boat ramp is or it joins this property. I don't believe it does. Um, and then he also said we already got a, a variance. That has nothing to do with this temporary disturbance. This, this is new, yep. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? Discussion or a motion then? Uh, with respect to the property in 1906 Long Lake Shore Drive, 
I would uh, first move to grant the dimensional variance to allow the driveway encroachment up to 13 feet in the 25 na feet natural features setback that's along the, the frontage and also to allow the temporary 10 foot disturbance into the required uh, natural features setback. <clears throat> Compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be burdensome based upon the fact that there is the canal that runs adjacent to this property. There's no injustice to the neighbors as a result of this. The area that is really being encroached upon is just the temporary area during construction, which will then be restored to its natural condition. Um, there are unique cir circumstances by virtue of the fact of the canal being adjacent uh, or on the side, and this is not self-created. Um, if approved, the application for all necessary permits must be made within one year. All permits must be obtained prior to installation, and the temporary disturbance of the natural features setback must be restored after construction. Support. I have a motion in support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm opposed. Anyone opposed? Do you want to take a... Yes, we have nays. I got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, your request is granted. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so we're <coughs> calling the next item, item 1, uh, T, 3558 Tuckahoe. Is the applicant ready? So uh, on this one, since uh, we did hear uh, this earlier, uh, you can see in the notes uh, Henry, uh, Giagrande, uh, Ford, and Meads may vote on this one. So uh, need the four. Four. four, yes. Four. We, need we have four. four. We you have you need to get all four of the eligible voters here. So okay. Good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> did you buy a lottery ticket? <laughs> <laughs> We got four very reasonable people, so great. Go ahead. Great, thank you. My name is Brian Nieper. I'm the architect. Um, so we have a whole house renovation in addition to a nice, a nice home in the village, Bloomfield Village. Um, uh, we're before you basically because of the shape of the lot, which is a tapering site, narrow, narrows back towards the rear of the, of the yard and also the position of the existing home. So the, uh, on the east side, which is the right side of that drawing, um, is the existing garage, which projects nearly three feet into the existing side yard setback. Uh, we're building the, a new master suite above that garage, so that, that new construction will be into the, into the existing setback, the same amount that the existing garage is. Um, on the east side, we, uh, Push the house back for a kitchen addition um, following the line of the existing house. We're three inches into that side yard setback. Um, it's just practical for construction to line everything up with the existing frames. So, any, any questions? Any questions from the board? <coughs> I'll open this to the public then for comment. Good evening, <coughs> Kathy Weisenborn representing Bloomfield Village Association. Um, we are in support of the variances on, um, on both sides of the house. Um, as Brian indicated, the, the one on the right is existing non-conforming, and um, the house doesn't quite sit parallel to the, to the lot line on the left, so to extend it a couple of feet, you're a few inches into the setback. So um, our board did approve this, and uh, we support the variances. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks. So anyone else would like to speak on this item? I'll close the public hearing then, bring it back to the board for discussion or a motion. I'll make a motion. As I recall, we didn't have association. We weren't certain that the association yes, was correct. on board at the yep. time. We have that now. All right, in regard to the appeal at um, oh, 3558 Tuckahoe, um, I move that the uh, dimensional variances be granted one foot into the westerly required 16 foot side yard setback and three feet into the 16 foot easterly side yard setback um, be approved um, as requested based on the information presented. The applicant did demonstrate all standards, practical difficulty, 
because compliance with the strict load and order of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome due to the slightly tapering um, shape of the lot and unique lot in the rear um, that the existing walls can be extended um, without or instead of the um, sloping lot line. Uh, there's no injustice to the neighbors <coughs> by reason of um, especially the obvious approval from the association um, minutes and board and the unique circumstances have been demonstrated of the property in the existing condition. Should this motion be approved, all necessary permits must be made, uh, applied for within one year, and all permits must be in place before starting construction. Support. I have a motion in support. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your request is granted. Calling the uh, next item, item number 1490, Tilbury. Hello, my name is uh, Ray Eichenlaub, the owner of 490 Tilbury. Um, we're looking to add a, or redo our garage and build new along with the second story, but it is encroaching on a non-conforming lot. Um, any kind of structurally kind of walls or nuances on it is non-conforming, so we're gonna have to get a variance no matter what. After working with the village association, um, we have come to agreeance that we, the neighbors and everyone around us have um, been happy with our proposal and look for a variance on this, uh, on this structure. <clears throat> Who uh, drew the picture of the house that's in the packet? Yeah. That was, um, do it again? Let me just read. <laughs> that is our builder. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we thought I it was under the kids. Kids. I will admit it's probably better than me. So <laughs> it just caught my eye. We do, we don't typically see something like that. Such there. elaborate. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot in there. Okay. That's better. Any other substantive questions of the applicant? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll open this up to the public for comment. I'm back. Um, our board also uh, reviewed this. Um, there is the hardship for with this one is it's a very difficult lot to build on. Uh, it's a corner lot. The existing house is pushed way to the back um, of the lot. So anything that they do to the garage or an, and uh, uh, adding over it is uh, it's an existing non-conforming structure, and you're going to end up with a variance. So. Um, we did support this. Uh, we felt that it, the addition was a nice improvement to the house, um, so we would support the variances. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Anyone else would like to speak on this? I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. I'll make a motion. Great. I'd like to make a motion in regards to the appeal <clears throat> at 490 Tillsbury Road. Um, <clears throat> I move that the variance be approved as requested based on the information presented. The applicant did demonstrate all standards for practical difficulty um, because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because of the uniqueness of the shape of the lot and the home's position on the lot. Uh, there's no injustice to the adjoining neighbors um, as this uh, has the approval of the association as well as uh, neighboring support. Uh, the unique circumstances of the property as well um, has to do with the existing floor, floor plan, which is non-conforming as well. And because of that, it is not self-created. Um, if approved, the motion also includes applications for all necessary permits must be made within one year, and all permits must be obtained prior to construction. Support. I have a motion in support. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. So as I uh, said at the start, item two has been uh, postponed to the next meeting. So we'll move to item three, 6014 Snowshoe Circle. Is the applicant ready? Thank you. State your name and address. Good evening. I'm Todd Ballou. My address is 3300 Berry Road, Ypsilanti. I'm an architect working with the homeowner, Shweta Shah. And uh, I kind of came into this process uh, after the application was made. So um, I'm somewhat unfamiliar, but it would help to frame the <laughs> our future comments. Um, I believe that we're asking for two things. One is an, a detached shed. And to my knowledge, the proposed shed is conforming to the zoning ordinance. 
but a review by the board is typical. Um, and then we're adding a, a fence around the perimeter and it is uh, the zoning ordinance is asking that that be set back uh, significantly from the property line. Um, so if it's possible, I'm wondering what the benefit of setting back the fence is just because the fences normally are used to denote the property. If that's a question, my answer would be because we require things like that to be screened on the opposite side of the fence. The fence so. itself being screened? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Shweta, would you like to say anything? <clears throat> Hi, good evening. My name is Shweta Shah. I'm at 6014 Snowshoe Circle. Um, and currently, the proposed fence line is because that is where our property line, that's where all the trees are. So the fence would be built like right along with the tree line. So therefore it doesn't become an eyesore to any of our neighbors. Um, I do have a sign off for all, by all our immediate neighbors, even across the street and to all the different sides, both sides, that that placement is more aesthetically pleasing than where the setback requires, which would cut through the, basically the middle of our rear yard and in where all the grass is on the side yard. So then it would be out in the open, just kind of floating around in our property. So that's why um, we were proposing for that fence line. And then in regards to the detached into the shed, um, in the future, we'd like to build a pool and have it in an enclosed attached pool to our home. And for the pool equipment, in order for it to stay not frozen over the um, winter months, especially recent winters, um, they're, requ they're requesting that it be contained in like a shed so that it's protected from the elements. And where the shed is proposed, that's also out of sight from, because we have trees and ewes and all that um, along all the lines. So it's kind of set and tucked in, so it's not visible from any of the streets or to our neighbors. So aesthetically, again, it like kind of gets incorporated into the property line that already has existing trees and foliage. That's all I have. <laughs> So, so, but you know, I, you heard the comment that the, the fence would need to be screened. So you understand that? Screened by like, just by like foliage and use and tree. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. So where we're, the yellow line is, that's where we already have existing entire, that whole line is all big pine trees and bushes and like beautiful foliage. Like if you look, it's, so it would be right there. So it would be screened. It won't be visible. But where the setbacks are according to the, I guess the rules, I don't know what the proper terminology is, it would be floating around in the middle of our yard, like on the grass line. I think they want the screening on the neighbor's side of the fence. Yeah, the neighbors. So Correct. Yeah, we, were, we would be building it so that the trees are behind the, and so that the, tree, the so trees would be. It has to be screened be from public view. So Correct. From, okay. A absolutely, yes. Any other questions from the board? I guess I have a question on, you know, these pictures here that we're looking at. Are those um, substantially on your property line already, these tall trees yes, here? Yes, those are already within our property line, and then the fence would just come in front of that so that we would use the trees that we've already planted as the screening for our neighbors. And so it just seems to make sense there. Well, if the trees are right on the property line, I mean, you can't put the fence right up against the trees. It would need to be in some. Then, you know, those taller ones don't meet our ordinance requirement of, um, you know, obscured 12 months of the year with, like, evergreens. You would also need evergreens on the outside of the fence. So I'm just wondering, I mean, I think you're, you know, maybe worried that we're saying it has to be 16 feet in, but I think we're, you know, willing to talk about four or five feet in to clear those trees and to put a continuous evergreen on the outside so your neighbors don't see it, sort of in addition, certainly to these taller deciduous ones on the right. Okay. These other ones with the berms, I don't see how the fence could actually be right on the property line anyway. No, it wouldn't. It would have to be inside because they have to clear it and dig yeah, the holes and do all and the proper things mm -hmm. for the fence. So it's not going to be butting up against the trees. It would still be like kind of where the grass line is. So it would still have to be inside there in order for them to make it all work. 
Well, now we're getting somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yes, so. I think we are. Yeah, yeah. and I have no problem. So I mean, we have and no the problem. yellow line shows it right on the property line. Okay. And I'm thinking you're taking down some of those trees. No, 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 no. We already have. We just installed those trees like not many years ago. So no, we just want to incorporate what we've already have and then put the fence inside onto our property closer towards our house, but mm-hmm. utilizing all of that. And then if there are any gaps left where there isn't any greenery, we would add in the evergreens On we use. the and far the side. Arborvitaes, yes. Agreed. Right. That's, a, that's a good start for us. So uh, I'll open this for the public <coughs> hearing then. So anyone would like to speak on this item? So if you could come up and state your name and address. Thank you. I'm Rob Levy. I live at 6191 Thorncrest. Um, my home is, um, is uh, diagonal to the far southwest corner of our neighbor's, our neighbor's home. So we're the only people that have a view actually of their, of their home. All the rest of the, home, the other homes are on, either on Snowshoe or on uh, Hills Drive. And uh, we live at, there at 6191. Um, we do, I have, do have a few questions. The, um, the outer, outer perimeters, I just want to get a clarification on two things. One is on the, on the fence. It was your intention to actually run it along one foot within the property line behind the screens. So you, you have to direct the question. Yeah, so my question public. is, the question is, is the fence to be, and it wasn't exactly clear because to talk about the fence to be behind the, the, those evergreens that are on their property and the berm that they have and adjacent to the property line by one foot, which would mean that the, the foliage is not blocking the um so i think you could tell from our our yeah question. well i was i was not clear i still wasn't well, clear about that because so, so i know we, I, yep. I if i can understand why she wouldn't want the fence in her beautiful yard with you know these these trees in front of it where your intention to put your so fence, again your comments are directed to us and then yes, she will okay. respond yes uh she'll have a chance to respond okay we'll very good sure thank that you that question is answered okay do you have any other questions that you would like to yes answer? the the other thing is um regarding the pool shed which is uh, t- uh proposed is 22 feet long by 11 feet by 11 feet high i believe 10 feet by 10, 10 22, by 22 feet. feet by 11. Could, could we put the drawing back up onto the, onto the screen? Okay, uh, go, ba- go back. Oh, sorry. yeah, there it is in yellow. Is that drawn to scale? That uh, the question is, is the yellow, is that yellow pool is drawn to scale? And then the mm. second question is, how far back is it from the lot line? Our uh, view of the house, <coughs> their house is quite apparent, diagonally looking from the, from the far uh, left, lower left corner of the lot line towards the house. And our concern was the placement of this 22 foot long structure how it was placed because this was not in the packets or anything online where in fact there was no drawing as to where this was it did say that it would encroach into this property but the question was you know where this was actually going to be placed and my question is number one is that is that actually to scale uh because 22 feet is very big for a pool house and um so the rear portion back, because we can see the um, rear setback to where that line says 231.5 feet or five inches feet. We can kind of see right through that area. They do have, um, so that was my uh, first question. How far back does that sit? Because if it's closer to, if it's closer to, if the setback is uh, it said that asked 25 feet, hold on one second, 24 feet, it's encroaching 24 feet into the required 25 feet rear setback. That's, that's the, the fence. fence. Oh, that's the fence, I'm sorry. It, the, the, um, the, the shed, doesn't the shed yeah, the meets, meets the setback. Yeah, the shed meets the setback. Meets the setback. Okay. The question I also have is there is... Um, uh, blocking, there are some three uh, evergreen trees. 
that they've planted back in that corner, but they don't go all the way into the corner. So we can see that we can see that structure from that. And so my question, my request would be is that they could put a couple additional evergreen trees in the in the far corner, and that would block the view of the shed and and uh, and the house, which there's a lot of lighting on in that house at night because they entertain a lot, and so that would be helpful. Okay. The other thing was also the color of the shed. If it in fact is there, I would prefer that it be a dark color as opposed to something bright and light, you know, and, and question also would be the lighting on the shed. If there would be any lighting on the rear of the shed uh, facing out towards the lot line. Okay, we'll have those answered. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. So anyone else would like to speak on this? So you can, you can we'll have the applicant uh, respond to your questions now. You can... Uh, Step away. Thank you for your comments. Okay. So, if you could address those questions. Yes. Thank you for your questions. Um, okay. I don't know if I know how to use this. But I think it. Press the button. Okay. And it'll, and it'll help. Okay. So, in regards to, so this basically right along this yellow line are where the existing tall trees are. Our intent was to build the fence inside that on our property so that the existing trees become like a natural fence for all our neighbors so that they don't have to see the fence and they don't have to you know, worry about the view of seeing a fence from their side. So that was our intent. Uh, I don't, we don't mind seeing our own fence, that's fine. Um, so that was the intent for that. Um, in regards to um, I shed, think the, any lighting on the shed? And there's going to be no lighting on the shed. It's just a, um, so this is eventually where the, like a pool is going to go in an enclosed ad addition to make it a year round pool, which is in the works. It's going to be, the permits are being submitted shortly for that as the architect is still. And then his comments that, that he can see the shed from his home and would you Correct. add additional so screening for along that? Along this line, we haven't finished placing all the rest of the pine trees because they were going to need access for when they dig the pool and stuff. They're going to need access to kind of get there to do that. So instead of digging, putting them all in now and then having to rip them out and then put them back in, we were waiting to get all this sorted. But just as we have like a pretty dense foliage going around the rest of the property, there's a few gaps here that still need to be filled in. And we are most definitely going to be doing that so that it's all screened in all around. Um, I don't remember if there was one other the color. The color of the oh, shed. the shed color. So our intent was that right now our home is like a kind of the color of these walls. It's a stucco ephus of that. And we just wanted the shed to match our home. So we were going to keep it the same aesthetic so that it just blends all in. Um, I hope that answers that. And I don't remember if there was any other questions. I, I think that's it. But as I said, the condition that we're going to have is you're going to have to have these structures screened immediately. So I, I don't know uh, what you're talking about waiting uh, with the pool to go in. You're going to have to have the shed and the fence screened now. Correct. They're, bu they're building it at the same time. So okay. we, it would be one. We're okay. not going to do it so where not, it has to be. Yeah. All right. Just wanted that to be clear. Correct. Absolutely. Any other questions from the board? I'm just a little concerned about how we deal with the fence since it's noticed as being basically on the property line. How do we define where it would be? Well, the fact that is, it is a lesser request. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know we can yes. consider it, yes. but, but how do we define it? Well, at this point, you do have a representation of the vegetation that is wrapping on the periphery. In fact, if you, um, you, you can see the vegetation identified on the site plan. Uh, it, it's almost um, uh, uh, ghosted, if you will, where that vegetation is intended or existing. Um, so it appears that there, you know, there is an opportunity to, for at least um, yeah, a 16 foot setback along both sides and also the rear where that fence would go. But I guess that's my point. Do we say or approximate 16? Do we say 16, right. 16 feet, feet from the property in, line? Or, I mean, you know. that's, yeah, that's, that's that's my only concern because it goes like this. Some of those like plant this. trees to screen it, right. which might be less than 16 feet. Right. We might be talking about more like it could be could be less than that too, like right. up yeah. to. That's what sure. I'd say. Ten. But I think the intent um, is clear of what she is she is admitted 
that she would install additional evergreens where That's there are gaps. From public view. From public so view. I, it's got to be located far enough inside to plant sufficient screening to right. screen it from public view. Right. Would you like to make a suggestion? Do you think six feet is required? <clears throat> Uh, no, more than that, I think. If you're going to plant the evergreens and give them room to grow, probably about I would say probably about six to ten yeah. feet within, like because right now the trees that are existing and all that is already on our property line, so they're yeah. already set back a good amount. Like our property line yeah. is there, and then we have all the pine trees, and then the fence would still go inside of that. So, thank you. I will be happy. Yes, yeah, so I think we have the intent and. We have the standard that you have to. It's just putting it into words so it's yeah. clear. Well, that's why we have this fabulous board to do things like that. We can do that. What would you, we just would you prefer to? Feet? I mean, which is what was requested. What's encroaching, that? Encroaching up to 15 feet. But that's a foot off the property. Yeah, it line. can't be encroaching. You mean? Yeah, she was asking for it to be encroaching, moving more towards the property line as opposed to in. Right, but what we're discussing is that it's not actually going to be 15, but just to give that leeway because she doesn't know exactly how big the trees are going to be and how much space she's actually going to need. So we know it's not going to encroach 15 feet because she has to move them in, but instead of limiting her to 10, just make it up to 15, which is what was noticed. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I could see that. Uh, yeah, I think I best practice would be to give the minimum variance as opposed to the maximum Correct. state. That the, That's what I think. Yeah, if the, the fence was at 10 feet, yeah. she'd be encroaching six. Yeah. Like, I, I think we don't want to be giving the maximum no, encroachment. I would we, say best practice would be the opposite. We want the minimum. So if your fence is required to be 16 feet in, how much distance do you think you need? Realistic, the, the trees are already there. You know, if you need 10 feet to accomplish that, then we're allowing a six foot encroachment. Yeah, something like yeah. that. That's what I'm thinking. Agreed. Yep. I probably only, uh, maybe. No. I think yeah, we go with that. 10 feet, I think so. <laughs> I think that, that sounds reasonable and easy to. Yep. Enough room for growth and. Great. But the number would be different for the rear yard, right? Mm, why? There's two separate setbacks. Encroaching six feet. Isn't the setback in the rear larger than the side? Well, it's, it's still encroach. You can encroach six feet into this rear yard setback. As well, yeah. Yeah, is it 35 foot setback on the back? 25? 20. For dock containment, it's 25 feet. And you go six feet in. So, so for the- It's gonna be a long way away from the property. <laughs> Correct, you're right. On the back, it's different because the backyard is set differently. So um, if you need 10 feet across the back, and how much is required? 25. 25. So maybe we're permitting them to encroach. 15, we're 15 back there mm -hmm. and six on the sides. Mm -hmm. How does that sound? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Are we ready for a motion? I think we are going. Okay, ahead. I think maybe I can, I can do this. Put it on the table. Okay. Um, in regards to the appeal at 6014 Snowshoe Circle, uh, in regard to the appeal um, for the dimensional variance, uh, I move the variance be approved as amended per our conversation today. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate standards for practical difficulty. Compliant with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because that fence could be potentially in the middle of the yard. There's no injustice to the um, adjoining neighbors. They've had their say, and, and you will be required to screen on the outside of the fence. Um, and the situation is not um, self-created due to the um, location of the lot line and the, the existing screening you have there. The dimensional variance is approved at six foot permitted encroachment on the side yards mm -hmm. and a 15 foot permitted encroachment in the rear. Um, and staff can show you where that is. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to the uh, uh, motion to approve the for the shed is a permission request. Um, 
Uh, I move that it be approved as submitted based on the information presented. The applicant did demonstrate compliance with Section 42-7.6 standards because the size of the accessory structure is compatible with the adjoining properties and the house. It's located actually in such a location where it can be screened as adjacent to the property and is within the required setbacks, will not hinder um, adjacent use of property due to, again, the screening that will be required from public view. Um, should these motions pass, all um, necessary permits must be pulled within one year and all permits must be obtained prior to construction. Support? So I motion to support. Any discussion? I just I want to be sure. What's that? Did we cover it all? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do I have to say no lighting on the shed? Well, you, you were going to, with the caveat about additional evergreens right. that's needed. Yeah, yeah, yes. that's what I was going to say. On that shed. I, I think you kind of said that about the shed. And also about the, the fencing, shed. too. Yep. Yeah. Shed fencing. Yep. Yep. Fencing's great. Screen to the height of the fence in um, arborage that goes 12 months a year. Okay. And then, and then you do need additional screening for the shed as part of that. So any other discussion on the motion? So I, I think we have a motion, support, and clarification. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> so calling the next item, item four, 410 Evansdale. Board. Um, my name is Ellen Yerkes. I'm with Antonelli Landscape representing John Oro at 410 North Evansdale Drive, Bloomfield Hills. This is a new build that's coming along gorgeously, by the way. Um, it's on a corner, so it's the first property when you turn into Evansdale from Squirrel, which is a distance off of the street that actually has a lot of screening as it is for that cor for a corner lot. It's not exactly exposed. You can see a lot of the, the um, mature trees from that overview. That's the side lot. So we will be adding additional green, evergreen trees. Um, fairly large spruce trees would be added along the squirrel side. Although it's pretty thick vegetation, it's still important to give the 12 months um, of full coverage by adding conifers. So that's just an overview, but what we are seeking today is the variance for our walls. <laughs> we need to um, have that sports court area there and the um, putting green attached area to retain and go with the slope of the grade without having to build up or build excavate down, but we do need to create flat surfaces for, of course, the function of a putting green and a basketball court. So there is a two foot retaining wall with the steps that lead you up to the um, putting green. And then there is a two foot wall again uh, at the back side of that for sitting. Um, and then that's retained with landscape block on a compacted uh, stone footing. Additionally, we have um, Seat walls, looking at the other side, so looking at that east felt elevation drawing is the first drawing there. Um, there's two landscape piers or pillars that are two by two and three feet high. And then extending on both sides is the 17 foot of two foot seat wall. So 24 inch, again, for seating. Um, but this kind of wraps into the natural grade of the land rather than having to um, do higher walls or anything like that. So we've kind of gradually stepped down these um, uh, features. And then there's another item. Um, if I want to show the other area. And then the driveway would need to be retained as well because there is a slope to his yard here. So this area is the the largest part is four feet and six inches tall. Um, and that will be eight and a half feet off of the property line. And this gives them enough space to park in that other garage, because as you can see there, there's a detached area that's another garage. So to be able to pull in and out of that, we've extended the, um, we're hoping to seek permission to extend that parking area um, into the side setback by six, 
seven and a half feet. Um, and then additionally, the retaining wall has come down to the backyard with steps leading to, to the pool deck. And lastly is our front yard design um, shown in the bottom right hand corner, the south elevation. We're looking to build two 16 foot long walls that are 24 inches high, which will include two pillars on each side for a total of four pillars that are two by two by three. And it's my understanding of the ordinance that you can't have walls more than two feet high within eight feet of the property line, and this is right on the property line. So I'm asking for an additional foot for those <coughs> pillars to be three feet high to accomplish this look. So it's purely aesthetic, the height? Yes, but also if it's shorter, yeah, it's, it's aesthetic. Because really, if there's like a foot of snow, <laughs> like what's the point of it all? Really, like two feet is small. So what we did is kept most of it two feet, and then we're trying to get three foot where the entrance would be more of a gateway and then he can decorate with pillar, like the uh, pots and flowers in it. So this is the first home in the, the subdivision too. So I feel like it's seen from squirrel, which in my opinion is a good thing. I think it brings value to the home and the neighborhood and is, um, um, and is compatible with the township as the aesthetics go. Um, and it doesn't hinder anybody's uh, lots. And I think it just adds value to the overall neighborhood as kind of being the entrance to the neighborhood. Um, so I have just another question. question. So it sounds like the other walls that you're requesting, not these high landscape walls, are, are necessary because of the topography and the sloping. Correct. But do you have that same consideration for the landscape walls that you're proposing? The ones at the front driveway? Right. No, it's actually fairly flat there. So this photo, um, and I have a picture of like what the front of the house entrance is if we want to go back to the photos. Oh, wait. Yeah, right there. So that that's the front of the home. Yeah, I don't have the pointer. But basically where that orange fencing we're looking to have, um, it would be, well, it's between the fencing where those pallets are sitting that we would be having like those um, erected. So, I mean, we got a two foot wall and then a three foot pillar at the end of each of, like at the, hmm. symmetrical to the entrance of the driveway on that each side. So no, it's not retaining anything. It's freestanding. Any other questions from the board? I'll open this up to the public for comment. Anyone here like to comment on this item? I will close the public hearing and bring it back. For questions, discussion, motion? I might have a question. So, I so, have. so I, I, I close, yeah, I, I close the public. <laughs> I, I, did you want to, you want to be part of the public comment? You're the next door neighbor? So I'm sorry, did you not hear when I said anyone would like to speak I wasn't on? Sure. You weren't sure? Okay, so. <laughs> I'll, I'll open it up again just because I think you misunderstood me. Would you like to comment on this if you're the next door neighbor? Yeah, okay, please do that. Please come back up. Yeah. No, you have to come up to the podium. Sorry that I did that so quickly. That's okay. <clears throat> I'm Thomas Macro. Uh, I live next door at 440 uh, North Evansdale. Okay, great. So, um, I guess my uh, one question would be on the... Uh, 16 inch or 16 foot setback on the uh, east side of the lot. Um, so it sounded like you're saying they're trying to get an approval or in the process of getting approval or maybe got an approval somehow or for the driveway to extend uh, east of that lot line or that, um, I guess that's a lot line, whatever it is, uh, easement line. Setback setback line whatever so was was that approved somewhere or driveways can extend into a side setback oh they can yes okay it's All the right. structure itself that's requiring the variance okay to retain the driveway okay i wasn't aware of that and the uh only other question i would have and i think they may have a <laughs> maybe been addressing this um there is, you know, going to be a lot of activity over on the sports court and all that type of thing. 
Um, there is also, because a lot of that uh, lawn is gone now, between you know the pool and the sports court and all of that stuff, has there been any revised drainage or uh, upgraded drainage system from what was originally uh, in there, which is, I was told a cistern, there is a cistern back in the back corner. I don't know if it's operational or not. So I don't know, I guess I'm wondering, where's the water gonna drain? So that's part of the township sure. approval process. There, there are, there are uh, uh, permits and approvals required for, for drainage for okay. any uh, construction of this nature because of the volume of water that would be generated from uses of, of this sort. Okay, so. but are we able to find out where it drains to? Once the, I mean, I was once, once the plants are submitted, you'd be more than welcome to come in and take and view the plants okay. as part of the permit process. Um, so that'll be part of the next phase that they would have, should they get approved, they'll have to come in and apply for permits. There'll be plan review. Ultimately, a permit will be issued, but you'll be more than welcome to access those drawings. Okay. And then you'll be able to see the location of the Because drain. I have kind of two concerns. One is the pool where it'll drain, um, and two, just general drainage. Because um, everything kind of drains down a, I don't know what you call it, it's, it's not really a ditch. I guess it is a deep ditch. Well, yeah, well, well, more than that, it runs along the um, west side of the property, well, between the two homes. And uh, that all goes into my woods, uh, which is the back part of my property. And then I'm down and around through the back over to uh, And all that's addressed in the process. permitting process when you get your building permits okay. to, to build a house of this okay, scale. Okay, so that's all been addressed. And well, it, it will be. So they, they have to come here first to make sure they can okay. build the structure, and then we go through the permitting process. Yeah, and I, I just think there's going to be a lot more runoff. Yep with yep. all the other facilities going in, which is yep. fine as long as everything gets addressed with the proper drainage. Yep. Well, those are good questions. That's all I had. All right, thanks so much. You're welcome. Bye. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? <clears throat> so I'll close the public hearing. I don't know if there's anything that you wanted to say in response to the comments. Good to go. I mean, you guys did a good job answering them for me. <laughs> Uh, but in regards to drainage, there's um, his downspouts are tied into channel drains, which are then tied um, underneath the patio out to the back to different kinds of um, riprap and catch basins. So this will be on the drainage plans that we'll have to submit for the permits upcoming. The, the amount of vegetation around it and open space around it is beneficial to this um, take up of water so I I see you have a lot of the woods there is it will drain into the woods just like your house does all right thanks uh, take it back now to the board any questions or motion I'll make a motion thank you so much <laughs> I'll, I'll start with the permission request first um, in, and uh, in regards to the appeal at 410 North Evansdale Drive um, for the proposed sports court putting green pier in seawalls. Um, I move that the uh, request be approved as submitted. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all compliance with section 42-7.6 standards um, because the use of accessory structures appropriate for the neighborhood, um, as this is a very common, these accessory structures are very common for such property. Um, and then for the dimensional variances, uh, for the same sports court putting greens, piers, seawalls located on square road secondary frontage. I also move um, that that be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all standards for practical difficulty um, because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome um, because this is a corner lot, um, so it has two frontages. Uh, there's no injustice to the adjoining neighbors um, as this is consistent with other homes in the area. Um, and uh, unique circumstances of the property having uh, multiple <coughs> frontages and then also uh, excessive topography um, and sloping areas and so in order to get use no reasonable use of these the structures you will have to create uh, areas to to uh, abide by that topography 
and because of that it is not self-created. Um, if approved, the motion must include application for all necessary permits must be made within one year and all permits must be obtained prior to construction. Um, there will be a request for additional evergreen plantings uh, to make sure that uh, they screen the fence and covered pool area from public view and must meet and exceed the height of the fence and are. Am I reading the right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, pool yeah. <laughs> thank you. Pool enclosure at the time of planting. Support. I have a motion and support. Any dis discussion? Yeah. discussion? Uh, would you consider adding these two conditions to that there'll be no lighting on the sports court and no lighting on the front piers? I was thinking of that too. That's why I was confused. I, I think we should add that, that uh, no illumination on the sports courts and they can only be operated during daylight hours. And the front piers, no lights on the front piers? And non illuminating piers. Okay, so I, I, I guess we can go back, and, but that's in the motion. Can we, can we just sort of agree that that's clarified as yep, opposed to? Yeah, I back? support. Um, yep. um, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have motion and support and clarification. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Thank you. It's, it's our pleasure. Decision. Okay. We didn't plan on. There, there was no <laughs> thing. And yeah. for the neighbor, there won't be any lights oh. on that sports court. It's not. Um, it's not in case that was something you were curious about. It's not permitted in Washington, in, in this township. So, okay. Thank you, board. All right. Okay. You're welcome. So let's go to the next item. Item five, two seven eight five, Ayrshire. Good evening. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Sure can. First of all, I um, in over 35 years in the construction business, uh, both commercial and residential, this is my first request for a variance. Don't wow. be too hard on me. Okay. <laughs> well, you're doing a good job. So could you give us your name and address? Yeah. Then? Pat <laughs> it's, I can do that. Okay. Good. It's Patrick Hill, H-I-L-L, -L, and it's... Um, 2785 R Shire, Field Township. Okay. So <laughs> this is, um, the old wall is gone. It was deteriorating, ugly, couldn't be repaired. So <clears throat> we, we put in a, a new wall. And when I went to the city to talk to them about it, they, you know, th and we, we figured the ordinance out that we couldn't go over two feet within the eight foot um, setback and what we were requesting is to um, go up to the grade level which is approximately two cores uh, something like uh, two feet or less so that we don't get pooling up there uh, on the top and um, that's pretty much it really and just so I understand it, you had a driveway there. You, you, you There's you a driveway there, and we're at the bottom of a hill. And yep. it's, this is a between the north and the, this is on the north side of this house. We're putting this addition on there. It's about a two-story, 2,500-foot, two-story addition uh, top and but, bottom. But the old driveway had a, uh, a retaining wall. Uh, we had one that was falling it. apart and it not was, holding It was up. aged and, and so ugly. You, had to, you had to upgrade it, <laughs> Yeah, and, and that, that's, what you, that's the reason you're here. That's the way okay. we did it, and and so it, we're we're really just replacing the same yes the same thing. We just want we just want the grade to not because we're really on the bottom. We get a lot of water down there. We put a new catch basin in, and we're yeah. taking care of you yep. know business. So yeah, so it's helping you with drainage. It's, it's oh yeah, it's, it's, we, it's, we it's, now have good drainage. It's but it's a more modern product, and it's oh yeah, more it's functional. the biggest one yeah. you can make. Big improvement. <laughs> it's it's yeah. huge. Yeah, people don't excite, get excited about retaining walls, but you're going to get a big yeah. benefit here. Okay. So, any other questions? So, what is the ultimate height of the installed retaining wall? Um, we 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 were requesting two feet, but we're no, we we're four, feet. four feet. Yeah. Okay, two feet in yeah. addition. And, and I um, I did get approval from the uh, next door neighbor. I have a signed copy here, and I also have the old retaining wall. If you're interested in looking at it. So, was it? I see it? Yeah. Yeah, was it closer to the two this feet? Or? I just, I was curious whether no. you could have, during this construction project, 
just graded that area so that you wouldn't need that retaining wall? Well, the concern was then the pooling of the water from the neighbors and, and, and additional drainage issues. Um, yeah, so now you've got a place for the, you've got a method for the water to drain. And if we do have overflow, we, we, we can yeah. go into that. We just want to hit the grade. And yeah. the owners agreed, the yeah. next door neighbors agreed to that, and that's all we want to mm, go yeah. to. Any other questions on the board? I'll open this to the public. Anyone would like to comment on this item? And I'll close the public hearing and bring it back. Do we have any further questions? I can make a motion. Great. So with regard to the appeal at 2785 Ayershire Drive, <laughs> I move that uh, the dimensional variance be approved as requested. Um, based on information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all the standards for practical difficulty because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome uh, because of the fact that this was a replacement retaining wall and also the uh, topography issues with regard to the uh, drainage and uh, overflow of water. There is no injustice to the adjoining neighbors by reason of the fact that they are uh, in support of this project. The unique circumstances with the property have been demonstrated, again, given the topography and the replacement nature of this wall. And none of these, uh, and this is not self-created due to the reasons stated above. I will add to this motion that all necessary permits should be made within five business days since it's already existing. And that uh, with evergreen screen, I don't think we are going to No, because you're on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's my motion. I'll support. Motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll call uh, the next item. Like item uh, 66855 Spruce Hill. Is the applicant ready? Item six, six, eight, five, five, Spruce Hill. Should we make a motion to? Yeah, well, let's move it to, move the, it to the end of the end. agenda. Or okay, so do I have a motion? Support. Yeah. And support. Yeah. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. We'll move that item to the end of the agenda. Move on to the next item, which would be item seven, two one zero seven Park Ridge. Is the applicant ready? Oh, good. Yeah, moved up. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Good evening to members of the board. My name is John Stewart. I live at 2107 Park Ridge Drive. Um, my wife and I are seeking a, a variance of six feet into the required 16 foot setback and also a variance on the requirement to not exceed 50% of the uh, ground floor square footage in the home. Um, we uh, are interested in having some, some storage space, uh, so we're looking to add a, a third garage space. Uh, I submitted uh, to all of my neighbors adjoining um, copies of the plan to do this, uh, received no objection there, got their approvals. Uh, our neighborhood association, Adams Square, requires that we um, uh, submit that then to the architectural committee. The Arch architectural committee uh, offered us approval on that. That paper, paperwork was included. So we're uh, asking that we be allowed to, uh, to uh, be granted those uh, variances. Thank you so much. Any questions from the board? Open this to the public. Anyone uh, like to comment on this item? Close public hearing, bring it back to the board. Uh, with respect to the property located at 2107 Park Ridge Drive, I would move to grant the dimensional variances to allow the garage addition encroaching six feet into the required 16 foot north area located in the easterly side yard and exceeding 14 feet in height um, and also it's it's not in here but also the variance to allow the the accessory use which right. would exceed half of the ground floor area yes. because the applicant has demonstrated practical difficulty by virtue of the the lot is an odd shape which makes it difficult to meet the setbacks on the side yard as they're they're going in toward the back and that unique circumstance makes it difficult to comply with the ordinance um, there would not be any injustice to the adjoining neighbors in fact they've ha uh, have all approved of your request and this is not self-created if the motion is approved application for all necessary permits must be made within one year 
All permits must be obtained prior to construction and you have to file a single family affidavit with the township. Support. Motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you. Uh, calling the next item, item eight. 6070 Daramore. Good evening. <clears throat> my name is John Goma. Um, this is my primary residence, 6070 Daramore Road. Um, so we are here seeking a, a variance uh, for our sports court. Um, so the sports court, gazebo, and the um, pool equipment were always on the original plans. And then when the mechanical inspector came to check the height of the pool equipment, I asked him, I said, why are you measuring this? He's like, because of the height. And I looked at the sports court, I looked at the backboard, and I said, all right. Um, so I called the building department immediately and asked to talk to them, and they said, yeah, I need to come here for a variance for the uh, backboard. Um, so the so we're here for that. Um, there will be no lighting on the sports courts. I have two young kids, and with these times, you just kind of want to have everything there at your house in your backyard. We just finished building this house. We moved in end of April. Um, we have beautiful neighbors, beautiful subdivision. Um, the site drains extremely well. Um, I made sure of that because during construction, we had a lot of rain, record fall, rainfalls. Um, and it drains ex extremely well, no standing water. Um, and that's really it. Look you have it. a gazebo? Yeah, can you? Where, uh, it's going to be it? a gazebo. So I figured since we're going for a variance Yeah, go now, for it. Yeah, 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 go yeah. For it. Where's it going to go? Yeah. Where's the gazebo? Um, yeah, where so is it located? See right there, yes, right okay. there. Okay, is that's it That's where the original plan was always. But is since we're here, I said, anything or what is it next? It is consistent with our neighbors. So the neighbor adjacent to me to the north has the same exact gazebo, sports court, and pool. And next to him, they're just finishing their pool and they're and putting a sports court as well. So all three houses are consistent with each other. My neighbor behind me uh, was in front of the board uh, not too long ago, and he got variance for the same exact things. Uh, my neighbors in front of me just finished building their house. So, um, so we're all consistent with each other. So it's going to go over that area that where the couch and the yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I was just curious. Any other questions from the board? I just am wondering, um, so I'm thinking about what I, if I want to approve this, what's my reason going to be for the pool equipment, not immediately adjacent to the residential building? So I, th because it's, to me, uh, my understanding was, and the pool equipment, again, we're always on the original site plan, approved, approved site plan. Um, I am tight on the side yard setback. And I have like a forced walkout in a sense, and that's like a little retaining wall, so I put it tight against that. So it's really attached to the house, but it's not because that retaining wall is attached to the house. Um, so we put it there, and again, it was always part of the original approved plans that they were proposed at that location. We just screened them. Okay, and it looks like from the pictures, um, all of the sports court and the gazebo and everything would be screened with evergreens you want everything to is ex i'm sorry yes everything is except for the south side i would love to add more I, all those trees are planted brand new we planted all those but on the south side uh it's a very delicate area because all our power lines are in the back and dte runs down that power that whole um property line and it's not a lot of room in dte you know um I'm not messing around and with that. And there's a neighbor back there? There is a neighbor back there, yes. He is here. Um, okay. He And I have letters supporting from all my neighbors that they're all supporting this. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Open this to the public for comment. Is there anyone here who'd like to comment on this item? All right, I'll close public comment. Bring it back for a motion. I can make a motion. Great. So with regard, I'll start with the uh, permission request for the sports court and the uh, <clears throat> the gazebo. I'm going to move that they be approved as submitted based on the information presented. The applicant did demonstrate compliance with section 42-7.6 standards. Mm -hmm. The uh, location of the accessory structures will not hinder or discourage the adjacent use of property due to the fact that they are uh, within the required setbacks and these are uh, 
common structures in this neighborhood. With regard to the dimensional variance for the <coughs> pool equipment not immediately adjacent to the residential building, I will move that that be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all the standards for practical difficulty because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because of the uh, nature of the, the building that's on that property and the walkout uh, basement that they have there. There is no injustice to the adjoining neighbors by reason of the fact that this is um, this is within setbacks and is not going to provide any sort of uh, noise or site nuisance. The unique circumstances of the property have been demonstrated, again, given the location of the home and the, um, the side, the, the space that they have on the side, and this is not self-created due to the reasons stated above. I'm going to add that uh, because these are already existing, all necessary permits should be made within five business days for the sports court. And with regard to, there should be no illumination in the sports court, and the sports court is limited, the, the use of it is limited to daytime hours. And for the, um, for the gazebo, because it's not already existing, you have one year to pull those necessary permits. And I'm not going to require, so, so here's what I'll say. For the evergreens that are already there, those should be maintained. So, so everything except for the south side, that you mentioned has the DTE uh, wires, mm -hmm. there should be 12 months out of your evergreen screening so that they're, it's blocking everything from public view. But because of the electrical that's on the south side, I'm not gonna require additional screening and on that portion. Sure, uh, can I say one more thing? Mm -hmm. Wait, we're in the middle of oh, the motion, sorry. so. Okay. <clears throat> can't do that. Sure. Support. So I have a motion and support, any discussion? So you're not gonna have any screening on the side of the gazebo? So the, that's not located on the property line. Um, okay, we can, can you go back to where the gazebo is on oh, the sorry. overhead? So what side is that of the house? That's south, south side. side. Oh, south. that is the south side. Yeah, so a um, couple trees in there or something that provides some blockage then all the way through. I mean, I guess my only concern is if, if there's electrical lines, he's not going to be able to put trees there. Tight to the structure should be a room. Yeah, it looks like it's far enough away from where the easement for utilities would be. Is that possible, or is it concrete over there? So it's we're, just a. I, oh, we can't. We can't ask well, him. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's all right. It is a, a, um, a good result. So let's. It's just... a raised paver patio, and DTE is right there. It's high voltage, um, but I believe. I believe that I can probably put some skinny trees, but I don't know. I'm, I can't say. A yeah. few arborvitae yeah. or something like that. It, it, it may be, possibly. I, I mean, it all depends on where. I'll have Ms. Dick come out and stake it and um, um, see exactly where it is, but I believe it's very tight. And then the grade falls. The grade falls um, there as well. Okay. So. Then never mind. Okay. <laughs> you know, there is. I'm sorry. Go back. So there is. Um, there is some arborvitaes. There's one, two, three, four, oh. five, about six okay. or seven of them there. All right. It's hard to tell in that yeah. picture. Where there, there is. is. Yeah, there is. He didn't really. Okay. And those will grow larger. So, yeah, I okay. think so. Keep the motion as it. Never mind. <laughs> All right. I'm all confused. So we have a motion. We have support. We have clarification again. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, congratulations to request this. Thank you so much. Can I ask one more thing unrelated to this? I had another project, address 5180 Franklin, that was supposed to be on the agenda. I don't see it here, so it's probably not on it, right? Uh, you, can yeah. call, you can call the planning department. You're probably on the November agenda. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Have a great night. We'd love to see you again. <laughs> I have a lot of projects in the town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank Tell you. your friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your next item. Yeah, hi there. My name is Taylor uh, with Skyview Detroit. Uh, we're the contractor for this project. Um, we are asking permission to build a pergola, a uh, beautiful pergola on their existing patio. Okay, great. Okay. Any questions from the board? Open this to public. Anyone would like to comment on the pergola? Close the public hearing, bring it back. Do you want to make a motion? Go right ahead. Okay. Great. Uh, in regard to the appeal at 5780 uh, Snowshoe Circle for the accessory structure, I move the request be approved as submitted. 
Uh, based on the information presented, the applicant uh, did demonstrate compliance with Section 42-7.6 standards. Um, since the use of the accessory structure is appropriate uh, to the neighborhood given the popularity of pergolas to optimize the enjoyment of people's property and also the location of the accessory structure will not hinder or discourage the adjacent use of the property due to the fact that it's being erected right on the existing patio. Uh, if approved, the motion must include application for all necessary permits, must be made within one year, and all permits must be obtained prior to construction. Additional evergreen plantings may be required to screen the pergola from public view and must meet or exceed the height of the pergola at the time of planting. Support. Motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your request is granted. Thank you, guys. Uh, calling item 10. 5222 two, Woodview. Hello. Uh, my name is Michael Billington. Uh, I'm the owner of 5222 two, Woodview. Um, we're requesting a, uh, a variance to allow a d uh, fence for the enjoyment of our backyard. Um, it would be encroaching on the back line. It would be five feet from the back of the property. Uh, that area is uh, wooded or has a lot of, of brush, and you'll see in the pictures. Uh, it's, it's designed to, to run through there and miss the trees. Um, you'll also, you know, any, any further to the back and it will run into DTE lines as well. Um, and if it goes forward, it has to go forward about probably 10 more feet bef to avoid various trees. Uh, and then it's sort of cutting into the back of the, the property. Um, then the other, the, that corner, which you're seeing at the bottom left, um, is sort of underneath a, an evergreen tree. And it's, it's, in, it's in that, it kind of, it has that zero foot variance because of the way the property tapers to the back. Um, and then it would run out uh, towards our house and be about 11 feet from the side uh, towards that end. So our proposal here in this picture is uh, the one side that would be uh, viewed by the neighbors, which is that south side, which is the right of this drawing. We would uh, plant a, very, a row of, of evergreen bushes to screen it. Um, the rest of it, so on the left side, it's basically just in the corner behind the house. You can't really see that. It connects to an existing fence uh, on the left side. Um, and on the back, it's, it's basically all shrubs and trees. So, yep, so the view to, okay. That top view is, is towards the, the north side. That's an existing fence in there. And then the bottom view is where it would run through uh, on the back. Can we go back a couple slides to the aerial where we, one more. So <clears throat> this is a dog containment area, but it, the red red line's the fence. It looks like there's a big opening there. So is that <laughs> is there an existing fence there? Or? Oh, that's the house. house. I don't the know house. what's wrong with the. Oh, okay. So the house. No, <laughs> okay. yeah. it's not. It's not showing up. There's no <laughs> PDF glitch. Okay. <laughs> My house gone. Okay, so it's connecting to the house. Yeah. The house. Gotcha. All right. Any other questions? And then you connect this to the existing <laughs> fence as well. Yeah, it would go up, it would go up to the, the existing side. fence at what's 5236, yeah. And it matches that black. It's a four foot aluminum fence that they have the same, basically. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> Open this public hearing. Anyone like to comment? Close public hearing. Motion? I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion. Um, I'll start with the permission request uh, first. Um, in regards to the appeal at 5222 Woodview Drive um, for the accessory structure, I move that the request be approved as submitted based on the information presented. The applicant did demonstrate compliance with Section 42-7.6 standards um, because of the use of the accessory structure is appropriate for the fence for the neighborhood as this is required uh, for dog containment. Um, in terms of the dimensional variance um, as well for the proposed dog fence, um, I also move that the variance be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all standards for practical difficulty because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome um, because of the unique high shape um, <laughs> shape of the lot. Uh, there's no injustice to the adjoining neighbors um, as this will be uh, screened and it will be connected to an existing fence. Uh, the unique circumstances with the property, again, um, the uh, shape of the property, uh, the uniqueness of that creates this unique situation, um, as well as the existing uh, screening. 
and because of that it is not self created um, with the approval of the motion uh, application for all necessary permits must be made within one year and all permits must be obtained prior to installation um, additional evergreen plantings may be required uh, to ensure that the fence is screened um, from public view and must meet or exceed the height of the fence at the time of planting support motion and support all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, your request is granted. Thank you. Uh, calling item 11783, Robin Hood Circle. Good evening. My name is Robert Kampa. I'm the home homeowner at 783 Robin Hood Circle, and uh, we are seeking approval for installation of a eight foot by eight foot hot tub in the rear of a yard, and that sits uh, well outside of the uh, 16 foot uh, setback uh, from the side property line. Okay, any questions from the board? Open this to the public. Anyone would like to comment? Close the public hearing, bring it back to the board. I just want to make sure it's screened from public view, the hot tub. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It sits below grade, so the actual, uh, the actual surface of the hot tub sits below grade since as they walk out uh, basement access, and uh, well, there will be additional evergreens along that uh, fence line. Okay. I'm ready to make a motion. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. So with regard to the appeal at 783 Robin Hood Circle for the uh, hot tub, I'm going to move that it be approved as submitted. It is, the applicant did demonstrate compliance with section 42-7.6 standards because the location of the accessory structure will not hinder or discourage the adjacent use of property due to the fact that it will be well within the uh, required setbacks and because it will be screened from public view by evergreens. So I'm going to add to this motion that all necessary permits should be made within one year and obtained prior to construction. And uh, just to reiterate that it will have to be screened 12 months out of the year with evergreens from public view. Support. Motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your request is granted. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, item 12, 1288 West Long Lake Road. Good evening. My name is Keith Logsden, architect with Michael Willoughby and Associates, representing the owners at 1288 Long Lake Road. Um, the property unfortunately had a, suffered a fire back in March of 2023, which destroyed a portion of the existing attached garage. We're requesting a variance to reconstruct the garage in the same location with the same footprint uh, as what was there before. We'll reuse the existing footings, which fortunately remain intact. Uh, the side yard setback of 16 feet is required, 0.7 feet is proposed. Um, the existing home and garage was built prior to the ordinance and built toward the east side of the lot. In fact, the west side yard setback is 32 feet, so it meets the total side yard setback requirement. Uh, variance was granted in 2020 for the southern portion of the garage, which remains standing. Um, <clears throat> And that also has a side yard setback of 0.7 feet. We're simply asking to maintain, not increase, the existing nonconformity. Um, the cost to rebuild the nonconforming portion of the damaged structure is approximately 27% of the total replacement cost. Um, and we do have um, we do have a letter from the neighbor. I don't know if you yes, we do see it. Okay, thank you. Uh, in support of granting the variance. Um, we've taken out a band of windows that was in the original house, be, original garage before it burned. Those will not be replaced. Uh, the east wall will be painted dark green so it disappears into the landscape. Um, and the neighbor to the east is the only neighbor that will be able to see the garage. Be happy to answer any questions. Thanks very much. Any questions from the board? So I'll open this to the public. Anyone would like to comment on this item? Close the public hearing. So I just have a really old house that's built right on the property line, fire, make a motion here. rebuilding it. So with regard to the appeal at 1288 West Long Lake Road for the dimensional variance, I move that it be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate all standards for practical difficulty because compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because of the fact that this is um, being rebuilt after a fire and the existing structure is half standing. There is no injustice to the adjoining neighbors by reason of the fact that they will uh, rebuild the garage in the same state that it had been in prior to the fire. Unique circumstances of the property have been demonstrated, again, given 
um, the uh, the fire that they experienced and the fact that half of or some I don't, I don't know what percentage but I'll say some of the garage is still standing and needs to be repaired and replaced and this is obviously not self-created due to the reasons stated above I will add to the motion that all necessary permits should be made within one year and obtain prior to installation. Support. support. Motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your request is granted. Thanks very much. Uh, calling the next item, item 13, 1490 and 1506 Lakewood Road. Good evening. My name is Patrick Funky with Michael J. Dolan Associates, landscape architects for the petitioners at 1490 and 1506 Lakewood. Um, we're here today uh, not for any structures, but to create more open space. Um, we have a unique situation. We worked on uh, the project 1506 when the home was new in 2006, and the homeowners invited me out. Uh, their, their lives have changed now. Their, their kids are grown and moved away and just wanted to invest in their property, and it looked so good that it didn't really need anything other than it, an existing vegetation buffer uh, between their adjacent neighbor at 1490, Vita and George Carvanas. I said, boy, it should be nice to maybe open up the view to the Chalmers Lake, which is just real serene. It's a non-sports lake. That was really, and get rid of the invasive species, but preserve the native trees, oak, maple, and walnut, um, and just have a nice lawn so that's not a defined property line. Uh, we hired uh, Bar Engineering out of Ann Arbor to define our wetland, and uh, there is one uh, silver maple uh, that is in the environmental features setback. It's an undesirable tree compared to the sugar maple, oak, walnut that we plan to preserve. So we're in front of you today uh, as a request to create more open space in the township and remove an undesirable sugar maple within the environmental feature setback area to open up the views for both neighbors at 1490 as well as 1506 to the beautiful Chalmers Lake. So really the point is to get rid of the invasive species. It is, correct. You're not, you're not trying to create a manicured lawn or no. additional open space. You're trying to get rid of really bad stuff. Yeah, buckthorn primarily. <laughs> yep. Okay. And then the silver maple, which okay. is unfortunately okay. a soft it. maple and it's undesirable compared to the hardwoods we have on the property that will be preserved. So I'm just curious, uh, Patty, why, why does this need permission? Because he's impacting that 25-foot natural future setback. He's, natural he's taking future things setback. and removing and that are there. I see. Exactly. Okay. Although it is the permanent natural. change to the environmental right. future setback. Right. Okay. Uh, anyone here like to comment on? I'll open the public. Anyone like to comment on this item? Close public hearing. Bring it back for a motion. I'll make a motion. Um, in regard to the appeal at 1490-1506 Lakewood um, for a, a variance to do some removal within the 25-foot um, natural features setback, basically an encroachment, um, uh, I move the variance be approved as requested. Based on the information provided, the applicant did demonstrate all the standards for practical difficulty because compliance with the strict or letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome in that the um, location of these unwanted and species are already within the natural features setback. There's no injustice to the adjoining neighbors. In fact, two of them have jointly come together on this. Um, and again, the unwanted species will be removed and the um, sight lines for everyone, the township and the waterway will be improved. Um, and it's not self-created. Um, it's really an overgrowth of um, some years. Should the uh, motion be approved, all necessary permits must be made within one year and all permits uh, received before starting construction. Support. Motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations to request. Thank Congratulations. you very much. I have one question for Patty and Andrea. We did submit for the permit previous to learning that we had to come in front of the board. Um, how, do I just contact the building department to see if that, now that this is, okay, great, because yes. the permit's already been sub yes. submitted. Yes. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you very much. You. Have a good evening. Uh, calling item 14, 3219 Barron Drive. 
Mm-hmm. Good evening. Terry Nosen, 32,000 Northwestern, Suite 195, Farmington Hills. I'm here on behalf of the doctors of Mohindra uh, that wish to uh, add an uncovered portion to their covered deck that's already on the property. The existing covered deck is in compliance, um, but we're right at the the 60-foot rear setback line. So this deck would just be an extension of that deck, uh, and it would not change the uh, view from the back. We submitted this to the Barron Estates Homeowners Association and received their approval, which uh, I think should probably be in your packet. Um, the railing is the same railing that's on the existing building. Uh, they are adding a stair because they really have no good egress to the backyard as uh, it was built. They didn't think they needed or wanted it at the time they moved in. Now they do. Um, that is pretty much it. There, there is a typo in the uh, uh, description here says it's a 17 by 15 it's really just a, it's 17 by 10 addition about 170 square feet plus the uh, stairway so it's a 10 foot encroachment into the 60 foot and the reason it's a 60 foot is the development uh, 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 ordinance that uh, Barron was developed under which has a 60 foot instead of a 35 foot rear yard which is kind of, I don't think there's any others in the township like that, are there? That's correct. Yeah, so I believe there have been a few others in Barron, similar. I had one on the lot right next door, actually, uh, for a deck. And they, they've, to my knowledge, I think they've all been approved. There have been a few others other than mine. Any questions from the board? I, oh. just, I just have a comment. You have a comment. All okay. Right. Well, I think and you, you know what that. I'm going to say. <laughs> I mean, this was a PUD, and the 60 foot rear setback was required in exchange for other things that you were given. This isn't the first time you've been here. I'm not the developer of this uh, one. But, I just bought you had, My customer bought a lot. But you know here. what I'm saying? I mean, you've been, okay, it's, sure. it's like part of this PUD was approved giving smaller setbacks in other areas keeping this larger setback in the rear so i'm i have a problem with this i'm just telling you straight up like i've had a problem with the other requests so well like i said it's the only one in the the only subdivision in the township that has this i think it's you know my editorial again, comment it's a, it's, it's a poorly drafted ordinance in that the real reason for the 60 foot is where you're abutting other outside properties which a lot of the properties in Barron do they but abut Wabik. Uh, this abuts another house in Barron uh, looks at their driveway and garage uh, it really uh, it's I think a little bit of a poorly crafted ordinance and shouldn't really apply in this case I would understand if it was on the Wabi so side. I'll just if it was this, on the, I, I'll I, just disagree yeah, with let you. Me, let yeah, me let me ahead. just. <laughs> yeah. This isn't yeah. relevant to the thing as much as it's intellectually, you know, stimulating to see you play volleyball with each other. So yeah. let's, <laughs> let's well, open it to the it, public. I guess I'm telling you like to comment about it. I'm going to close public hearing and bring it back for a discussion or a motion. So I don't want you to. I know we have a former chair that sort of offered an opinion on this. So there, there was a PUD and there was sort of some conditions that sort of said this is, this is the setback that you're going to have to abide by because of other concessions made. So that's the, yeah. that's the challenge is, okay, so do you, do you, do you make an exception yeah. to But what's what? the practical difficulty? I'm not necessarily opposed to this, but I'm yeah. just thinking, I mean, if, even if I want to make a motion. I can give you a practical difficulty if I may. All right, well, I, I guess, you know, this is, should we, you're going to have to sit. For, you know. for, nope. We're, <laughs> we're discussing. We're done. We're now we're, now we're okay. discussing. Okay, you don't want to, I think I put it on my application. Yeah, okay. All right, okay, well. Okay. So what happens on 3229? That's a 
open space? Or is it a buildable lot? And that's a buildable lot, and then that that 60 foot setback actually would be measured to um, um, Long Lake Road. So it's fronts on Barron Court would be the front, mm -hmm. and the rear, which would be that 60 foot setback, mm -hmm. would be for like, them. Yeah, for them would be uh, a long, long Lake. I mean, I understand Carol's point, but I, I I don't have a problem with it. It's I mean, it, as he said, there's. There's other lots I think that this was intended to apply to, and somebody wants a deck. There's enough room there. There's no negative impact. So once there's a deck there, can somebody make that a screen porch? No. no well, they have to deck. come back. Right, so they'd have to come back. Yeah, screen porch, that would be a different mm -hmm. ask to me. Than yeah, deck. Exactly. roof would yeah. be, yeah. would do it from, would be a no to me. as far as I'd Oh, okay. I, I guess I see a practical difficulty because this is attached to the house. So then that requires it to, to be, because, okay, the, if the accessory structure, including the detached deck, could be built within 16 feet of the rear property line with only permission, mm -hmm. a permission request, but the proposed deck requires a dimensional variance because it's attached to the principal residence. Correct. Yep. Okay. It becomes part of the house, in essence. Okay. So... You know, a deck attached to your house is a nice feature. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of space. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion here. Okay. So with regard to the appeal at um, 3219 Barron Drive for the dimensional variance, I'm going to move that it be approved as requested. Based on the information presented, the applicant demonstrated all the standards for practical difficulty. Because the compliance with the strict letter of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because of the um, the nature of this PUD and the fact that this is going to be uh, attached to the, the house as opposed to being a detached uh, porch or deck rather. There is no injustice to the adjoining neighbors by reason of the fact that we've, we've heard no uh, opposition tonight and other neighbors have similar attachments to their homes. Unique circumstances of the property have been demonstrated again given its um, location in this PUD and the uh, attached nature of the uh, of the proposed accessory this is not self-created due to the reasons stated above and all applications for the permit should be made within one year and obtained prior to construction support motion and support any discussion all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Any opposed? No. Not opposed. Okay. Want to do a roll call? Yeah, why don't we do a roll call? Okay. Add to the drama. So we've got, uh, let's see. Um, so, we, Faki? Yes. Ford? Yes. Gia Grande? No. Taylor? I mean, I'm sorry, Taylor. I'm sorry. Henry? Yes. Rosati? No. Meads? Yes. Oh, it comes down to the last vote. <laughs> But no roof. <laughs> Motion passes Never. four to two. Where'd you take math? <laughs> two, three, four. Count she was the four. Good. Yeah, passes. Came down the last four. Right? Yes, we're good. So my oh, math was good. There's only six of us. Yeah, so she was oh. four. <laughs> so my math was good. Okay, <laughs> on the next one. <laughs> Item 15. Um, Steven Crater Brick for 3654 Wallbleet Drive, seeking to put a swim spa in the rear yard. There's like a 15 foot grade change from the road to the where the spa would be, and you can't see it nearly anywhere. And we're putting evergreens on the north side there to screen it from the only neighbor that would be able to see it. Okay. Any questions from the board about the screen or the spa or the. I'll open this to public. Would the last remaining gentleman like to comment? <laughs> Hmm. You're good? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. I'd like to make a motion in regard to the appeal at 3654 Walbury Drive. Um, I, I move the variance be approved as requested. No, it's just a permission request. Correct, permission. A, um, a permission request be um, granted based on the documents submitted. Um, based on the information presented, the applicant did demonstrate compliance mm -hmm. with section 42-76 standard because of the size of the existing 
the accessory structures compatible with the adjoining neighbors is appropriate to the neighborhood. The location of the existing structure will not hinder or discourage any neighboring um, landowners due to the sloping topography and its um, inherently hidden location. Um, for the same reason, it will not require screening and um, is harmonious to the neighbor neighborhood. Should the motion be approved, all applications for permits must be made within one year and all permits must be pulled prior to construction. Support. Motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your request is granted. Thank you. So item 16 has been postponed. Item 17, likewise, has been postponed. We'll move to item 18. So one Three, five, seven, zero, telegraph. How are you? I'm well. How are you? My name is Tony Antone. Uh, I'm a resident of the township and also on the board of directors at Bloomfield Christian School. Uh, we're here before you today to seek approval for a sports court and batting cages uh, in our rear yard and uh, happy to answer any questions. So maybe could you just, because uh, I went through this with the staff, some of the things that you agreed to uh, when you got yes. feedback from the neighborhood. So. Yes, uh, we, we agreed to um, uh, have essentially limit the hours um, to be consistent with our soccer field hours that we got approved back in 2020. What are those hours? Um, Patty, okay. maybe I'll I just so happen to have them Thank right you. here. <laughs> Let's see, um, use of the sports facility to be no earlier than 8 a.m. on school days and 9 a.m. on the weekends and no later than 8 p.m. Correct, uh, also no lights. And um, although the court is, as we're buying it, is striped for pickleball, that's really not the intent of it. So there was some concern about that aspect of it, and we said we're not even planning to use it for pickleball, but we'll commit to stopping any pickleball that the gym instructors might have where the kids learn how to play by 3 p.m., and they were, they were great with that. So uh, it's really meant to be more basketball uh, and four square, those sorts of things. Okay, any other questions on the board? So I'll uh, open it to the public. <laughs> Close public, bring it back. Okay. Um, I'll start with the permission request first. Um, in regards to the appeal at 3570 Telegraph Road, um, a permission request for the proposed sports court. Um, I move that the request be approved as submitted based on the information presented. The applicant did demonstrate compliance with section 42-7.6 standards uh, because the use of the such structure is appropriate for a school um, in, the, in the area. Um, in terms of the dimensional variance um, for the uh, required fence exceeding four feet in height. Um, I also move that that variance be approved as requested based on the information presented. The applicant did demonstrate all standards for practical difficulty um, because compliance with the strict letter uh, of the ordinance would be unduly burdensome because uh, it would prevent the reasonable uh, use of the court. Uh, there's no injustice to the injuring neighbors because they did work very hard to uh, work in harmony and adjusting the schedules and, and for the use of the structure. Um, unique circumstances of the property being that this is a school, they do actually <laughs> have to have some recreational uh, outlets and because of that it is not self-created. Um, if approved, the motion also includes application for all necessary permits must be made within one year and all permits must be obtained prior to construction. Um, there may be additional evergreens plantings may be required to screen the sports courts from public view. Um, there is no illumination permitted for the sports court and the use of the sports court should be limited to what has been agreed upon um, as opposed to our standard uh, daytime hours. Support. support. Motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your request is great. Thank you all very much. I'll be in the office tomorrow and Thursday. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right, so we have uh, item six to deal with, 6855 Spruce Hill, which I don't <laughs> okay. take up. We can't take I've never up. heard of a fence for cats. So I, I didn't either, so. so <laughs> yeah. For cats, the cat, the cat can climb a fen that yeah. fence. Yeah, I think that, you know, that's. Is it going to have a top to it? That's balderdash. No. <laughs> that's balderdash, that's what I'd say. No, it's to keep the coyotes out. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, cats but the cat oh, can go keep over the cat there. in. <laughs> It's not a good looking fence. Yeah, it's I don't know. I just, I, when I read it, I just yeah, yeah. I thought this is, <laughs> yeah, just doesn't make dash. sense. It's not important to them. I don't, don't know why we would want to entertain it. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes we decide them. It's up to you guys, but it just, right. it's one. Well, and six feet. It would have been great to hear. Right. 
if you look at the fence, it's the type of fence that a cat could easily climb. Yeah, yeah. like a nice, they like enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, fun fence, yeah. So I, it's a pleasure. I mean, let's just table it. Yeah, we I, I, table if you're it. You're gonna deny it. I think you gotta have the person here. Yeah, you guys. agree. Yes. A motion to table number six to next support. meeting or motion. next support. available. Motion uh, to table and support. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Tabled. And so motion we have a to adjourn. motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're adjourned.